All right. Good day, everyone. And thank you for joining today's Ask Me Anything, where we answer your questions about cannabis legalization in New York. We do this every Wednesday at 4.20 p.m. New York City time. I'd like to welcome back those of you who have joined us for previous Ask Me Anything sessions. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I hope you'll make it a regular occurrence. My name is Jeffrey Hoffman, and I am an attorney in New York whose legal practice focuses entirely on cannabis. If you would like to contact me, you can do that either here on LinkedIn. I welcome all connection requests, or you can contact me at my email address, which you can find at the bottom of the screen, info at 420jurist.com, which I guess you might say makes me the 420 jurist. And as the 420 jurist, I will be answering your questions, roughly half of them from a list of questions that I've gotten from previous Ask Me Anything sessions, and roughly half of them from questions which you post in the comments here today. So if you'd like to ask a question, now is the time to do so. As always, I have my usual attorney disclaimer, that being that I am indeed an attorney, but I am not your attorney, uh, at least not yet, uh, other than for the few of you um, who I am indeed your attorney, don't worry, I am still your attorney. There are a few of you here in the audience today, but for the rest of you, um, I am not your attorney. Um, this event is not legal advice. It does not create an attorney-client relationship, and it is not a solicitation to offer legal advice. And so with that, let's get to the questions. I'm going to go to the first one from the backlog. And that question is, will the midterm elections play any factor in New York State rolling out their license programs? Um, if you believe the polling that we are currently seeing in New York, um, the answer is no. It is not likely that the midterm elections will play much, if any, factor in New York State rolling out its licensing program. Um, here in New York State, the current governor, Governor Hochul, is a proponent of the cannabis industry. In fact, those of you who have uh, been paying attention for a while know that after the cannabis law was passed, uh, then Governor Cuomo actually sat on his thumbs for the remainder of his time in office and did not appoint the members of the Cannabis Control Board. However, once Governor Hochul, who previously was the lieutenant governor here in New York, um, once she became governor after Governor Cuomo left office, uh, she almost immediately appointed the members of the Cannabis Control Board. Um, so obviously, whereas uh, the previous resident of the governor's mansion up in Albany clearly was not in any hurry to see the regulated cannabis industry created in the state of New York, um, it is very clear that his successor, Governor Hochul, um, was quite excited about that because, like I said, she almost immediately appointed the members of the Cannabis Control Board. So the polling that we're seeing now is that Governor Hochul is quite likely to be reelected. Um, there is almost no chance that the led the, the uh, General Assembly here, or I guess, excuse me, the state legislature, I've got North Carolina on the brain just a bit where they have a General Assembly. Uh, but here in New York, we do have a legislature and the, uh, I, I guess I also have assembly on the brain because we call the, the uh, People's House the assembly here in New York. Um, it's the, almost no chance that the assembly or the, um, uh, the, uh, the Senate 
are going to flip parties. Um, it has historically been possible here in New York that the Republican Party has had control of the state Senate. In fact, we had uh, at least one election, I believe, where the Democrats actually won more seats in the Senate. And then members of the Republican Party um, offered some of the more conservative Democrats um, very nice offices if they would simply abandon their fellow party members and vote with those Republicans so that the Republican Party could have control of the of the chamber. And that's indeed what happened. Um, that was in the 2010s at some point, I do believe. Um, but I don't think there's much chance of that happening this go around. Um, so if the polling is to be believed and uh, the Democrats still control the legislature here in New York and the governor's mansion, um, there really is no reason to believe that there'll be any impact um, from the midterms on the state's rollout of the licensing program. I think if anything, um, what is impacting the rollout of the licensing programming now is the delay we are seeing in getting the regulations for the nine standard licenses that are in the cannabis law. Now, I do know the Cannabis Control Board and the OCM are very, very focused uh, with their counterparts in DASNY on getting the Justice Involved program up and running. Um, we're deep in the application period for that. It ends here um, uh, later this month, uh, less than two weeks to go. Uh, so obviously they're very focused on that. Uh, but really uh, to see further rollout of the program, we are gonna need to see um, all of the regulations for the nine standard licenses that are in the cannabis law. and it does seem that uh, we may not see those until very late this year. And then perhaps with the, uh, the application period for those licenses opening uh, middle of next year. Those are some of the dates that we've seen some fo from folks in the responsible regulatory bodies for the regulated cannabis program here in the state. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and see if things move along those lines. All right, let's go to a question or two from the chat today. Can you be selected for CARD and then apply as a general applicant for retail? So it has been made very clear every time I've seen anyone in any of the regulatory bodies talk about it, um, that the intent is, why don't you get one license and show us that you're able to uh, effectively and responsibly and, and profitably operate one license. And then we'll talk about giving you additional licenses. Um, as the questioner I'm sure is familiar with, uh, based on the law here in the state of New York, someone getting a dispensary, retail dispensary license for adult use cannabis will be able to operate up to three locations. And um, just again, when I've seen Tremaine Wright speak about this, um, when you look at the verbiage on the OCM website, when they talk about this, when they say they're not planning to give um, more than one card license to um, one individual, um, when Tremaine Wright has spoken, she is, um, I'm basically using the exact same language that she has that, uh, you know, how about you get one license, demonstrate to the Cannabis Control Board and the OCM that, that you're able to effectively operate that one license. And, you know, if you're if you're a, a, a good licensee, I, I think there's no reason why the state wouldn't be happy to give you uh, two additional licenses. There's always less risk in giving additional licenses to a successful licensee uh, versus bringing in a fresh licensee that has not operated before. Um, so I think the state would absolutely be very interested in giving you additional licenses after you have demonstrated um, that you can operate the one. So if you get one of the one. You go into uh, these initial ones, you go into the DASNY space, uh, you don't have any cannabis walking out the back door, um, you make all your tax filings, uh, you, you don't have any problems uh, with the labor union, just you operate like a, 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 a good licensee. Uh, there's no reason why your regulator would not be happy to have you um, operate additional licenses. So I think that would be your plan if your eventual goal is to get um, all three licenses, which the cannabis law says that you're able to do. All right. Since we're talking about retail locations, let's go to a question from the backlog, which is, what do you estimate as the cost to open up a retail location? 
So this is going to be a highly variable number here in New York, depending on where you do it. Um, urban locations will obviously be more expensive than non-urban locations. And downstate locations, especially in the New York City area, where it can take you three months to pull permits. And, you know, it's it's a million dollars to do anything here in the city. Um, it's going to obviously cost you more. Uh, typically, I see a ballpark square footage number for a dispensary, and that is just upfitting the dispensary, getting the, the physical plant, if you will, up and ready uh, to, uh, to operate. Uh, it's somewhere between $250 and $350 per square foot. So if you had a thousand uh, square foot location, uh, you'd be looking at two hundred fifty thousand to three hundred fifty thousand. Um, you know, if you look at the Dasney plants for their spaces, they're somewhere between three and five thousand square feet. Um, so you know, at five thousand square feet, and let's go in the middle of that range at three hundred a square foot. You know, that's one point five million. Um, obviously, I think that's an average if you're talking about one. You know, way upstate uh, could be less. You're talking about one in the heart of Manhattan. I think obviously they're going to want to have, you know, a flagship dispensary in Times Square. That one could be an order of magnitude more, um, depending on what you wanted to do, right? And I think that space is going to have to be pretty crazy in order to make the amount of revenue that they're going to need to, to be profitable in, in that location, given the real estate costs. Um, but again, that 250 to 350, I think is a good you know, stroll in the park number for what it takes to get the retail location itself up and running. Um, you're then looking about having operating um, expenses, uh, you know, your working capital, if you will, um, to be able to deal with salaries, to be able to deal with inventory, to be able to deal with all the other expenses you're going to have. Um, so, you know, let's say, let's go with the 3,000 square foot location. Let's say it's 300 square foot. So it's 900,000. You know, I would have another 600,000 plus on on site 600,000 to to a million so somewhere 1.5 to 2 million i think sounds right for for what you're looking at there it it can never hurt to have more right and obviously if you're downstate or if you're um in a in a core urban area where perhaps your operating expenses might be more or in a suburban area there are some certainly some suburban areas where your operating expenses could be similar to your um, your, your, your more downtown or very urban area expenses. Um, but I think that gives you kind of a, a good range, uh, of areas of, of what it's going to take to get you open. Right. Um, but again, it's going to be highly variable depending on where you are in the state and, uh, and the size, right. Um, there are econ both economies of scale as well as issues, depending on how big you want to go. And if you're going to be multiple store stories, in a building, do you need to have an elevator? I mean, there's all kinds of things that can that can really open up the cost there. But again, I think 250 to 350 a square foot is a good number on you know build out and, and and getting to where the physical plant can open its doors. And then of course you've got your working capital and other operating expenses that you're going to need um, to get open and running. And then hopefully you're going to price right and market right and do the things you need to do so that your daily, weekly, and monthly turnover gets you where you need to be. And of course we all love 280e which means you're going to have a very high effective tax rate. So you're going to have to operate a very tight ship in order to be profitable, but it is doable. So that's what it'll take you to get the doors open roughly and off you go. All right. Let's go to another question from the uh, questions coming in today. In your opinion, what is New York doing the best right now? Where can they do better right now? All right, so um, I think the application process seems to be working pretty smoothly. Um, they've got you know well over 200 conditional cultivators with licenses now. Um, we got a little over a dozen conditional processors um, with licenses now. We're in the middle of the uh, licensing period, the application period for the conditional adult use retail dispensary license. Um, so I do think that uh, it's so far so good with the application process. Now, the uh, first two that they've actually given out, the conditional cultivator and conditional processor, these were folks that were already in the hemp program. So uh, it, it was not a completely, 
I guess, de novo process. Uh, these folks that are in the conditional adult use retail dispensary license process um, were not in any type of program with the state previously. So it's not folks that the state already had information about or relationship with. Um, again, my take is that so far the application has held up well. Um, I don't think uh, that it's seen um, the volume that we will eventually see for the standard licenses. Um, the latest number that I saw is roughly about 175 applications have been submitted. Um, that was a day or two ago, so it's certainly a little bit more than that now. Um, but uh, not numbers that you would think would really stress the application system. Um, but so far, so good. The system hasn't crashed that I've heard of. Um, the, the folks that I've worked with on their applications um, have, have worked pretty well. Um, the application has been pretty seamless. I, I will say one really great thing is I was actually sitting literally with one of my clients as we were going through the application and we had a question about it and literally there um, in the meeting with my client, we called the OCM, um, got on the phone with somebody, asked them the question, got an answer. It was great. Uh, no, not a great, uh, really appreciable wait time. Uh, folks were very competent, knew the answers uh, to the questions that we had. Um, so that went really well. Um, so I think right now, um, and obviously where the rubber is one place where the rubber is really meeting the road in a very public way um, is this application process. And again, so far so good as far as what I can see. Um, where I think they could do a little better, and I don't know if it's really a matter of better. I just, I wish things were moving a little faster, right? I think a lot of people are concerned, um, particularly uh, dispensary clients that I'm talking with and just people in general that are interested in the dispensaries and just how the industry is going to go, that there's some concern with how uh, openly and notoriously um, the um, illegal uh, storefronts are operating. Um, here in New York City, the police have been told hands off. They're, they're not to enforce in any way against these stores. Um, so I just, I do think there is some concern um, among the folks that are going to eventually have licenses about how much uh, runway and time is being given um, for these stores to operate. I do think eventually once the licenses are given out and these stores start opening, uh, particularly the DASNY stores, that you will start to see um, a clampdown on the uh, illegal stores that are operating. Um, but again, the concern will have been that these stores operated uh, for a while um, and, and really got a foothold in the market, so to speak. And yes, you'll be able to enforce against them, but um, some of the damage is done, so to speak. So uh, there's just some concern, um, again, among clients that I have that are going to get dispensary licenses and just people that I've talked to uh, generally in the industry about um, the toehold that, um, again, particularly here in New York City, I know. Um, you know, I was in Albany recently and there's stores there. I know there's other stores in Syracuse and, and pretty much in every town um, here in New York. Um, but particularly here in New York, you know, I walked um, Amsterdam Avenue from 110th Street uh, down to 80th Street the other day. And uh, there was literally one um, cannabis selling, you know, former bodega, I guess, every two or three blocks. And on some blocks, there were a couple. Um, so it's, it's just, um, uh, you know, it, it's a little concerning how much, uh, runway these organizations have been given. I, I, you know, there, there have been some cease and desist letters from the OCM. Um, I just think between the amount of time it is going to take now to get the regulations, you know, like I said earlier, it's now sounding like, uh, we probably don't see the full regulations for the nine standard licenses until late this year. And then the light applications uh, period for the license is probably not until, you know, sometime middle of next year. So uh, it's just there's going to be a while that we're going to have operated, you know, over a year of uh, illicit cannabis businesses um, in a lot of places. It'll just be very interesting to see when and how um, that crackdown will happen. All right. Let's... Uh... Let's now go to another question from the backlog. How many total dispensary licenses are they going to issue in New York State? So New York is not a state with an artificial cap. There are 
several states that have legalized where in their law they implemented a cap on the number of licenses they were going to issue, which created an artificial scarcity, which we know what does to prices when you create an artificial scarcity. The cannabis law basically says it's up to the cannabis control board to decide how many licensees there should be. And when I've seen Tremaine Wright speak about this matter, which she has several times, um, her words are that their goal is not to implement some type of artificial cap, but rather to meet the needs of the market. So I do believe that they're going to start issuing these conditional adult use retail dispensary licenses. Um, they have a cap on the amount of funds they're going to have for that. So that's going to cap the number of locations that they can build. Um, and then once they start doing the standard licenses, um, obviously, I think they'll start opening those as quickly as they believe they need to in locations all over the state. And then they're going to watch how the cannabis market goes. And if you see stores that have, continue to have lines outside the door, they'll issue more licenses in those places. And if you see places where um, stores are having a tough time being profitable, they'll issue less licenses in, in those locations. So I, I think it's very smart uh, for them to try to really get a handle of what the market is going to look like and not come to the table with any preconceived ideas. Now, I do think there is some analytic work we can do to try to come up with numbers about um, how many dispensaries there potentially will be in the state. So I looked at Colorado, and when I last looked at it, it's been a number of months now. Um, but I believe at the time Colorado had a mid three digit number of dispensaries. I think it was in the in the four hundreds somewhere, maybe five five hundreds. Um, actually, let me look that number up real quick. Talk among, talk amongst yourselves real quick, and I'm gonna gonna dig up this number. So I wanna, it's, a, it's a good question, and I think I have actually an exact number for it. Do, do, do. Actually, I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. All right. Well, anyway, my browser just crashed, so I'm not going to deal with that right now. All right. The, the gist of it is that from the numbers that I came to, if you project the population of Colorado, New York is about three and a half times the size of Colorado. So if you look at the number of dispensaries they currently have in Colorado and roughly multiply it by three and a half, that should give you roughly the number of dispensaries that New York would be able to support in a, there you go. Thank you, Pat. So 572 retail stores and 438 medical stores. So that comes to, what is that? Roughly a thousand overall. So if you're going to go overall for New York, that would be 3,500. I think that number is high probably for what Colorado can ultimately support. If you look at what's going on in Colorado right now, um, actually, I think for this year, they're probably going to sell less cannabis dollar wise than they did last year. Um, so, uh, if, if you, if you just look at it from that, I, I you know, I don't know if that's purely going to be from price decline or if that's from less demand. Uh, but I do think what you're basically seeing is, is a plateau. So, you know, if you want to call it 500 and, uh, you know, the, the multiplier is three and a half, right? There you go. 600. So three and a half would be 2,100 dispensaries here in New York. Now, I do tend to, for New York, I tend to go with the over of everything related to cannabis. Um, the, uh, just as far as how big the market is going to be, how many dispensaries there'll be, all of these types of things. 
Um, but there you go. So Colorado's again, New York's three and a half times bigger. So that's kind of a good back of the envelope way to, to get a guesstimate of what you might think is going to, going to happen in New York as far as the, the number of dispensaries that the state could support. All right, let's do one more question and uh, then we're going to call it a day. What is the current plan to keep the medical market stocked while also serving the recreational market? Is there anything in place to ensure medical patients are prioritized over adult use customers? So it's not clear to me that there's going to be as much of a risk as far as supply here in New York for the medical folks. Um, I do think there may be uh, a lack of supply for the adult use folks. Um, but what happened, uh, I think the what the questioner is getting at um, is related to what happened in New Jersey. So New Jersey opened up their adult use program by initially letting the medical uh, cannabis providers um, also sell adult use. So the concern there was that they would allow the supply that needed to go to medical folks go to their adult use folks uh, because it was effectively going to be the, the, the same stores and the same everything. Um, so they made rules that the dispensaries in New Jersey had to have open hours, certain hours where they were only open to their medical folks. And they had to uh, you know, certify to the state that they would have sufficient supply or reserve sufficient supply for their medical patients. Um, and basically my understanding from some reports is that a lot of the dispensaries just didn't do the hours, special hours for the medical folks and got fined by the state and accepted the fines as a cost of doing business. Um, that, uh, you know, it, it, this is the concern, right? Is that, and we talked about this in previous sessions that when, States open up their adult use. Um, if not the regulator, certainly the the stores uh, leave behind the medical and and uh, start thinking only about the adult use. Um, but again, that was unique to how New Jersey did their program, where they let the medical folks then also do adult use from the same stores and the same you know the the the, the same everything that was going on. Um, so there were concerns that the medical program. Uh, could have a, a disruption in its, in its supply in New Jersey. Here in New York, they're not doing it that way. The ROs, as we call them here in New York, the folks that are um, doing the medical cannabis at retail are not going to be the additional uh, initial adult use retailers. The initial ones are going to be, of course, first the uh, justice involved individuals whose uh, license period is open right now. Um, every time I've seen Tremaine Wright speak, she's indicated that before the Cannabis Control Board is going to allow the ROs to get into the adult use market, they're going to let the social and economic equity applicants and the small mom and pop retail businesses get their standard licenses and get into the marketplace and get a toehold uh, before they let the larger players get into the adult use market. So um, I, I just, I, I'm not sure that we're going to see the problem or the the hypothetical problem that they thought they would have in New Jersey here in New York. The, the ROs are still going to be selling um, medical cannabis. Now we still do have some problems with uh, people not being able to register cards and just issues with um, uh, how the ROs are operating generally. But um, I don't think it's going to be a, su apply pr a supply problem. In fact, if anything, I think it might even have be possible that if they feel that there's going to be a supply constraint in the adult use, that they might let one time the ROs sell some of their supply into the adult use market. Um, certainly the Cannabis Control Board could allow that if they wanted to. And I think they just may keep an eye on how the conditional cultivators that are growing now, um, how much product they're able to bring to market and, and what things look like at the, the dispensaries that get opened here late this year and early next year and uh, how things work um, once they get open. All right. I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. We really appreciate um, your attendance. Uh, yes, Andrew Cooper, thank you. $360,000 in fines to the medical guys for not doing what they were supposed to do um, for the poor medical patients. It just it shows you what happens in states when, when adult use happens. The, the, the medical just 
becomes the bastard stepchild of the of the program. It just it's it's really unfortunate. Uh, anyway, thank you everyone for attending. Um, we're gonna do it uh, again next week. Next Wednesday, we do it every Wednesday at four twenty p.m. By all means, we'd like to see all of you next week. Um, if you're not currently a connection of mine on LinkedIn, please reach out. Give me a connection request. Happy to do it. And as you all know, as, as excited as I am and everyone is about the regulated industry that's coming, the most important thing about the cannabis law is the expungement of uh, all of the cannabis convictions, the ability to get the higher level convictions expunged via 440, and no more nonviolent cannabis offenders incarcerated in the state of New York. We're going to get there. We don't want any nonviolent cannabis offenders incarcerated in this state. They all got to come home. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one.